we we want all these things around us to change, but we don't want to control the things that we can change. Like we can, can change our we can change our health, we can change our mental health, we can change our physical health, we can change our spiritual walk. But a lot of us don't want to do it because we don't see any immediate benefits, right? And a lot of us, if I'm being real, and I've been here, like our life, our life uh, is controlled by pressure and panic. And I've had conversations with people recently, especially in the economy, what's going on. So many people are being controlled by panic, and I get it, right? It's like, man, I got, I got, I got to, you know, make things happen. I got, I got, I'm grind, 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 grind. And I understand there's seasons where you got to hustle. There's seasons where you got to do more than um, your normal. But as I always teach, man, when you get out of pace, it's like me on this trail right now. Like I'm working my way back up to, to my running pace because I'm doing four miles today, but I'm walking and running a little mixture. But I'm working my way up back to my four or five mile runs. And it's going to take a while for me to get there. But I have to learn how to stay in my pace because today, if I try to do that, <laughs> somebody gonna have to be carrying me out this trail. So I have to be loyal to my pace. And sometimes the pace is frustrating, right? Because you know, maybe, I mean, a few years ago, I was at, I was in great health and shape. And I'm like, man, and you think about that. And the same thing in life. Sometimes like we think about two years, three years ago, four years ago, and it's like, man, I want to get back to that. And you're trying to rush the process and you allow, you know, your pace to be guided by panic, by being frantic. You allow your pace to be guided by, um, scarcity, you know? And so you have to learn how to say, you know what, I'm going to just trust the process um, and nothing wrong with trusting the process because the process is a process for a reason. So you have to trust it, even though it doesn't make sense sometimes, even though it's filled with a lot of uncertainty and, but you got to have a place, a sanctuary where you come to like, just release and let go because this life, I'm going to just tell y'all this. And some of y'all might not believe it. I've been preaching this for the last 15 years. This life, this life is all about, this life is all about, um, it's a mental game. You know what I mean? Like I've been in places in my life where I had everything, like everything, checking off all the boxes, the bucket list is checked off financially. I mean, everything. Right. And, and those, uh, those have been at times, some of the lowest times in my life where vice versa, I had times where I didn't have all the boxes checked off, but my mental health was like, like, boom, like up there. Right. No matter what happened to my life, my perspective was great. And I just, I, I understood life, you know what I mean? At least my life. And so I tell y'all that, and I've been telling y'all that for years, but I know y'all listen to a lot of entrepreneurs online telling y'all to chase this and chase that. And a lot of those people be empty. And I know a lot of those people, so I'm not just capping. And I'm just telling you from experience, like there's nothing you can obtain in this world that's gonna satisfy your soul. I promise you that. Millions of, and this is person that has millions of followers, this person has, who has millions of dollars, this person that has checked off a lot of boxes that's known around the world, there's nothing in this world that you can obtain in this world that's going to make you whole. I promise you. You know what I mean? I promise you. It might ease some things for you. It might make seasons of your life a little bit better. I'm not discrediting that. But in order to be whole, I feel like personally, you got to build a connection with God, right? That works in lack and abundance. You got to really strengthen your perspective and take care of your mental health. That's why I've been telling y'all for years, man, to protect your peace. I've been telling y'all, man, to... You know, take care of your bodies, take care of life, take care of your relationships, take care of your circles of things around you. Because when you start to enjoy life, no matter what, because to be real with you, the simplest things are the most important things in life. If you sit down and think about it, I promise you, the things you take for granted are the most important things in life, right? Being able to walk. You think that's so simple until you stop walking, <laughs> being able to breathe. I had asthma my whole life, so I understand the importance of having some good lungs. You know what I mean? the people around you that you take for granted until you lose them. So it's crazy how we value all these other things that really don't mean nothing. I mean, that really can be replaced. You can get money back. You can get things back. I promise you all those, you can get success back. All the things that the world tells you to go chase, you can get those things. And a lot of us, we exhausted because we spend our whole entire life chasing it. You know what I mean? Like I'm being real, which I know people say, chase your dreams and chase, chase, chase. It's a sexy message online to, for, for, for you to believe in other people more. Like, and I'm just going to tell y'all that. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. But a lot of people are going to tell you that to make them seem like they're experts so you can follow them, so you can buy their product, all the other stuff. When half of these people don't know what they're talking about anyway. Half of them lost. Probably more lost than you. But they sell you a good game. So I refuse to sit here and sell you some dreams. You know what I mean? Of course, I want to help you level up whatever it is that you're doing. I want you to be the greatest at what you do. No doubt. But also, I want you to be fulfilled. Like, I, I want you to get to... 
I would say the majority of people get to success and they don't know who they are once they get there, right? They lost themselves on the journey. They don't know who they are. What's the point of that? That's why you got people committing suicide. You seen the man with the PGA, God bless his soul, a PGA golfer just committed suicide. Why? Why? You know what I mean? He's a PGA golfer. He's reached his level. But I'm going to tell you what happens. And you can listen to me and not listen to me. You re you go, you get whatever it is that you're chasing. And I promise you, just like everything in life, you get used to it. Your brain adjusts, your life adjusts. And you're like, okay, I'm used to this million dollars. And I know that seems crazy. If you don't got it, you're going to be, I'm used to it. What can, what else can I buy? I'm used to the new house. I'm used to the new car. Some of y'all know that you got a new car and two years later, you're like, dang, I still got this car. note. <laughs> I want to take this car back. Right. You get used to it. And I'm just speaking truth to you. You get used to it. And then it's like when you get used to it, you're like, dang, like, well, I chased all these things. The American dream said I needed to be happy and be whole. And now I feel like there's nothing less to chase. So I'm going to kill myself. There's nothing more to life. Right. If this can't make me happy, if this can't make me happy. You know, if this cannot make me happy, then what can? And so I've always said this quote. If you can't be fulfilled with nothing, you'll never be fulfilled with everything. And I want you to really think about that. Like fulfillment works on perspective. And as I always told you, fulfillment is doing what you love with who you love. You know what a fulfilled day for me is? Coming out here, talking to y'all, going home to my babies. You know what I mean? Like living in purpose. That's a fulfilled day. You know, it's not about, I've had videos do a gazillion views and I still felt the same the next day. I still had stress. I've had... So many things, events were speaking in front of 12,000 people, my own events, thousands of people. And still, y'all know my story. Go, go listen to my book to 2016. That'll tell you. And I'm not saying that success is bad because it's good. It opens up more opportunities and doors. But my whole point in telling y'all this is like, you got to find what fulfills you, period. And then when you find what fulfills you, then the journey becomes easy. Then you're not in this frantic pace of life. You're like, okay. You know, this is where I'm at. This is my pace. I feel good at this pace. I feel satisfied at this pace right now. I feel content in a positive way in this at this pace. And that allows you to do more. That allows you to get in better shape, spiritual, spiritually, emotionally. And it opens up the door, man, to more things for your life. So that's just my two cents to y'all. Just my two cents. But a lot of times, man, I think y'all hear me, but y'all don't feel me. And unfortunately, for so many people, they're going to have to experience it. And I see it in my inbox all the time. It's like, Trent, you said this years ago, and I see what you mean. You know, some of us, we waiting on a relationship. We waiting on the, the, the whatever to make us feel whole. And that's not going to make you complete. It might make you complete for a little bit. But then when the newness wears off, like everything in this world, how our brains are programmed literally to adjust, you're going to go back to norm. You know, I, I teach... I teach, um, uh, I call it your set level of happiness. And it's something that I really work on. I want to give y'all this gift as I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to recover up here. I'm talking to y'all for a while. I got to get back on my run, but literally, man, uh, let me see who's in here. What's up y'all. What's up? What's up? What up? BWA. What up? What up? You hear me? Okay, cool. So, I want to give y'all this while you're on here. And it's something that you can, I, I don't think I'll put this in protect your peace. I'm actually, I'm actually recording an audio book, by the way, next week. So for y'all that want the audio book, it's coming soon, probably this summer, but I'm recording it next week. It's gonna have extra, like extra stuff in there. If you do got the physical copy book. So I'm excited about that. But what I want to teach you real quick, it's called your set level of happiness. Okay. Now you can say set level of peace, set level of joy, whatever word you want to use, but I'm gonna say happiness. So what that means is on a scale from one to 10, we always have a set level of happiness, right? And what that means is that we always come back to this level, okay? So, for example, say your set level of happiness is two, okay? That's your level of happiness. You're probably depressed. You're probably sad. But maybe you have something go well that day, right? It shoots up to a nine temporar temporarily. Maybe you have a good month. It shoots up to a nine or ten. And what happens over time, you're always going to come back down to your set level of happiness. No matter what happens in your life, no matter how many good days, you're always gonna come back down to your to your set level of happiness. And so my 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 uh, ask of you and what I've been trying to do my whole life 
is trying to increase my set level of happiness because listen, life is full of ups and downs. You can have days where you feel great. You can have days that suck. But the key is what's your neutral, right? We could say that your neutral level of happiness, what's that? And so if you're a two, your goal would be, man, let me get this to a three. Let me get this to a four. Let me get this to a five. Right now in my life, I can honestly say I'm probably at about an eight. So no matter what happens in my life, highs or lows, I always come back to an eight. No matter what, if I have a horrible day, the next day I come back to an eight. And how I work on that is literally doing things like this, literally understanding what fulfills me, literally talking to God, talking to myself and understanding like the meaning of life for me. How you define your life is everything. Your definitions are everything. So I'm always trying to control meanings, always. And sometimes I get it wrong, but I'm always trying to control meanings and say, okay, this means that some type of empowerment is going to happen in my life, even in the most disempowering moments in my life, right? And so me working on that, me strengthening my mental health by doing things like that, right? By having the right people around, by disconnecting in nature, by setting boundaries, all the things I talk about protect your peace, that's increased my neutral level of happiness. So no matter what happens in a week or in a day, I'm always going to come back to this place, right? So my goal is to be a 10, which I probably doubt I ever will, <laughs> but my goal is to be a 10. And that's the work. A few years ago, I was probably out of one, a two. No matter what happened in my life, I was the guy. Y'all seen me make this video about this where it's like, man, everything's going right. I'm just waiting on something to go wrong. I couldn't even appreciate the blessings and right things in my life because my mind was so, so in depression, my mental health, that I was just waiting for it to end. Like it, it was almost hard to be successful because I just knew the success wasn't going to last. And some of us, we have a fear of success because of that. We have a fear of happiness because of that, because we're waiting on it to mess up. We're waiting on it to not go right again. We're waiting on it to fail. So what do we do? We just stay neutral. Like we just sit back and just allow life, allow life to, to lead us instead of us leading life. You got to be intentional with your life. You know what I mean? And so for me, another thing that I've done, not that y'all care, but maybe somebody here does. Another thing that I've done is... I've learned how to, um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, I was about to tell y'all, I don't know. I forgot. Hopefully I remember <laughs> what up, what up, Jason? Yeah. So just think about that. Like, how can you work on that? Like, who are you like, like where you don't depend on, Oh, there, that's what I was going to say. So for me, it's like sports. We call it staying neutral in sports. So for me, I don't let the highs get me too high. I don't let the lows get me too low. And I've learned how to stay neutral in my emotions. Like sometimes I mess up, I fail at that, but I've learned a lot better to stay neutral in my emotions. So I can have the greatest things in the world happen. I appreciate it, but I just learned how to say, man, this is a journey. It's not a destination because some of us, what happens is we get some type of success. We get some type of happiness and we label that thing as a destination when we still have more life to live. I don't have destinations. Some of us have destination sickness, addiction, where we're addicted to destinations. I call it the destination disease where you're always chasing a destination. You're chasing the goal. But if we live this life and you know this, if you sit time and think this life, the destination always changes. Like no matter what type of goals that you set, that marker always moves. So I've learned how to disconnect from destinations and I've learned how to enjoy the journey. So I celebrate, excuse my spin. I celebrate, I celebrate. You know, I, I, I reward myself at times, but I still know that there's more life to live. And so I'll celebrate once I die. <laughs> like, that'd be my greatest celebration, you know, once I die. So, and that just works for me, y'all. It might not work for you. Everything I'm saying to you today, you might be like, Trent, I do not feel that, right? All of that. But some I want to share. And I'm the guy that's going to tell you, to trial and error everything that you hear. You know what I mean? Because what might work for me might not work for you. But I am about to start a run group in Dallas, Fort Worth. More so Fort Worth. Because Dallas, I would say Dallas, but Dallas a little. It's, it a, <laughs> it's really Dallas, Fort Worth. But if you want to drive, you can drive. But I'm going to start a run group back up, man. A lot of people have been asking me to do it. I used to do it, especially out here. And I want I wanted to hold me accountable to get me getting in my best running shape. So if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth area... Make sure you show up. And then also why I got you here, uh, my 40th birthday is coming um, September 21st. I'm having my event in Dallas for words. It's going to be incredible. If you ever been to one of my events, uh, you know, if you know, you know. And so it would be a life changing event. It's called the Legendary Life. 
I'm going to help each and every one of you live a legendary life by this event because you all have a legend inside you. So you can go to TrentShelton.com. It should be there. If it's not there, it'll be there soon. But uh, I would love to see you there. You know, um, you got to travel. Don't ask me in the chat to come to Charlotte, to come to Africa. You got to come to Dallas for work on this one for my birthday. So. So I want to see y'all there. My 40th. It's going to be legendary, man. I promise you. And I promise you, when you leave my event, you're going to know that there's a you inside of you that you need to meet, which is the greatest you. My events aren't boring. At least I don't think they are. They're not boring. They're not your typical conferences where you sit there and listen to a million speakers talk. I don't do that. I bring experience to my events. So you're going to get it all. So I've been working on it relentlessly. And um, it's September 21st. It will sell out. Uh, I'm doing a smaller venue because I want to make it more intimate. So uh, it'll be about, I think, like 600 seats, something like that. So get your tickets. People already bought them. There's a few options, regular VIP, max VIP, all the stuff. So whatever suits you. They, oh, Diva, you got your ticket? That's what's up. Deontay, what's up? Your birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. But um, I might as well walk and talk with y'all. Where's my key? Yeah, I'm going to walk and talk. My lower back, man. Anytime I'm out of shape, which I'm in shape, but I've been sitting on a bad chair, man. That's how you know you're getting old. I'm about to be funny, Trent, for a moment, but that's how you know you're getting old, bro. I sit on, I sit on our, our counter chair today, and my dang lower back is killing me. And so, man, when my lower back hurt when I run, I am done. So that's why today's been more of a... Let me start my watch. Uh... Today's been more of a walk instead of run. But yeah, man, when you get old, man, I wouldn't say old. I'm not old, but like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a football player. So my body, my body is like older than most 40 year old, uh, 39 year olds. You know what I mean? It's been banged up. So I've been spending a lot of my latter years. Uh, dang, hold on. Shoot. Dang, stickers. Ah, get out my shoe. I've been spending a lot of my uh, my latter years <laughs> getting my health back, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like you know, you wake up, you know, man, you gotta be careful when you sneeze. So I snow, I, I sneezed the other day, and I was down there pulling my back muscles. So I'm like, Lord Jesus, I'm at the age where you wake up and you gotta think about what you did yesterday, and all you did was nothing, and you're sore. I'm like, man, I had a dude tell me out here too once. I'll never forget my dog. He was like, man, I'm telling you, bro, enjoy your 30s, man. He's like, he was like 45. So we turned 45, man. Stuff just be hurting for no reason. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Man, he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. So I'm having to take, like, extra care of my health, though, for real, though. I'm definitely not in the shape that I want to be in. I got about 20 pounds to lose. <sighs> it's about 20 pounds. 20, 25 pounds. I'm dropping. Uh, that's my best running shape, man. I feel healthy at that weight when I run. So, so yeah, I'm just, uh, why not, you know? I've always been one of them guys to, like, break the stigma. Like, one of the things that I teach people, and don't take it out of context, by the way, but I think you'll get the point. One of the things I teach my son is I always say, man, go where it's not crowded. You know, and sometimes that isn't the case, right? I mean, sometimes there's greatness where crowded places are taking place for sure. But I said the majority, if you go to a place where it's not crowded, it means that you're probably sacrificing or investing in yourself more than somebody else. So out here, it's not crowded. It's a very hard trail. It's in Texas. It's a little warm today. Um, by the way, I think Texas moved closer to the sun somehow because it'd be too hot. We had a tornado the other day. I was like, how you have a tornado then it's sunny else? Anyways, but... um. When we go to the gym early in the morning, like the, the parking lot's empty. So I've always told him, man, like, or we go to the, on the weekend, we go up to the school, work on routes. I always told him, I said, man, this is the place you need to be, right? Where there's a lot of work that could be taking place. Majority of people don't go the extra mile. They don't. And they live an average life. No disrespect to anybody. But I always tell people, man, like, a lot of times we complain about our life, 
but yet we just accept life and we just go through the motions. You know what I mean? Again, we don't we don't control the things we can control. We don't max out the things we can control. And then we want to complain about life. So I've always taught them straight ownership, straight responsibility by saying it all starts with you. If you want anything to change in your life, you got to start. You know what I mean? So that's just... Yeah, I see you, Christy. We all we all gonna go through tough times, man. It's life. It's how you respond, and I know I know sometimes it's hard to respond in a positive way, especially when you have a life altering situation. But you got to think about it. Like, what's the alternative? You know, I, I know I bring up my mom a lot, but it's like a thing y'all can relate to and understand. Like, yeah, my mom died. I struggled for a while, but like, what am I gonna do? Just quit? <laughs> like. I love my mom too much to quit, but like what I'm gonna do is just quit. Cause my mom's not here and just say, Oh yeah. The reason why I stopped because my mom died, nobody cares. Once you realize that nobody really cares about your situation, except the few people that do stop feeling sorry for yourself. And you got to say, okay, this is over. How are we moving forward? And that's what I've done very well in my career. In my life is that it's not that like I haven't had no road bumps. People have always asked like, how you been consistent for the last 15 years, Trent? And doing things at a high level, I just tell people, Shh, that's it. I just stay consistent. I just show up and control the things I can control. I don't try to do the most. I stay in my lane. And that's it. Do things like this. Come on live and talk to y'all. You know what I mean? I ain't got to get all cute. I ain't got to have the perfect this and perfect that to speak to y'all and talk to y'all. See, some of these influencers got to put on makeup. Got to have the perfect lighting to talk to y'all. Man, child, please. I love y'all, but it ain't that serious. So I just come holler at y'all. And this is a way to get my message across. I record my, I'm gonna record the podcast out here. Y'all listen to the podcast. Matter of fact, go listen to today's episode. I record my podcast out here on my cell phone. I don't care. I know they lie to you and tell you that you gotta have a nice studio and all that stuff. For what? A message is a message. I got one of the top podcasts in the world, literally. And that's no cap. I'm not saying that in capping. One of the top podcasts in the world. And I record it on my cell phone. Sometimes I'm in my studio, but I record it out here. A message is a message. We be worried about the wrong stuff. So I just tell y'all that, man, because y'all think y'all need perfection. And I know a lot of these social media influencers be telling y'all that. They really ain't got no proof. But if somebody with 16 million people, I think I would listen, maybe just a little bit. You don't need all that, man. You got to have belief in what you do. You got to bring value in yourself by believing in yourself and proving it to yourself. God, thanks, something did me. Why? I love nature. Don't love the things in nature, though. Something bit me in my buttocks. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need, you just, you need belief in what you do. That's it. That's what separates you. Y'all got me about to go in. You need belief in what you do. And a lot of people don't believe in what they do. The reason I come out here, yes, I want to get in better shape, but I want to beat me. Right, I want to come out here, run four miles, walk four miles today, walk, run, and I want to show myself I can do it. I ain't worried about y'all. When I say y'all, I ain't worried about the world. Right, I ain't worried about, God dang, bro, what is biting me? Shit. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so I'm just tearing my butt up. I'm going to have, like, bumps on my butt. But, um, you know, like, I love y'all. When I say y'all, I'm talking about, like, the outside world. I'm not trying to prove nobody wrong. I ain't trying to compete with nobody. Is that a Blue Jay? Dang. Hold up. I ain't never seen no Blue Jay in Texas. That ain't a Blue Jay. I think my mom playing tricks on me. Oh, nah. I'm tripping. Uh, that's how you know what side I'm getting delirious. But, um, But you know what I mean? So I, I, I share that with y'all because I think sometimes we think we need this, like, this perfect presentation. Nobody cares about the presentation no more. We're, it's 2024. Nobody cares about how cute your page is. Nobody cares. I'm telling you. People care about, man, do you believe? Man, what is that? Bro, I know that ain't no coyote. Come on, man. Come on, bro. I ain't trying to deal with him today. Come on. I see something jumping down there that's that's brown and it's moving it's moving pretty fluid. We're about to see what it is. God dang. 
Not today. I ain't even in shape. I ain't got time to play. Maybe it was a deer. Hopefully it was a baby deer. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. It's Texas out here. You be seeing everything. So when y'all read my book, you know what I be talking about when I be on my when I recorded my podcast out here in nature. You know what I'm talking about. I think I'd be capping in my book for real though. They be having everything out here. But they said they're afraid of humans, so we'll see. We'll find out. Cause I ain't turning around. It's hot. You got to just eat me. <laughs> but nah, I'm not saying like for y'all to love who I am. I'm just giving y'all permission. Um to like be who you are. You know what I mean? Just be who you are. And, and I don't say that in a way like if you're a negative person, just be who you are. You know what I mean? Don't take it out of context, but like, oh, nah, I ain't. When you see somebody here, you just start seeing a lot of stuff. I ran into a bobcat once. I ain't gonna lie to you. I turned, I turned around. I was like, no, sir, not today. I wasn't trying to find out. I know a lot of y'all gonna be like, oh, they don't attack humans. do a bear roar and <laughs> nah, people be like it'd be funny people be like oh they don't attack humans shoot all right it's like the person that tell you come to this house and say they dog don't bite and then they dog look like like start acting like they about to bite you well i don't know what's wrong with him or her now nah, i've had some crazy encounters in nature i'm not gonna go on story time but i have i've had some crazy stuff <laughs> But um, but yeah, and you know what's crazy too? I'm I'm random today, but I'm just going all the place. The power of the mind, right? So like, I ain't gonna lie, I was pretty tired before I pressed live. But my mind is so focused on the message and talking to y'all that I'm not focused on being tired. That's why I always tell y'all what you focus on is what you will feel, and I promise you it's proven. I promise you, literally. And I'm not a scientist or whatever, but I've done my own study. In the research center of Shelton, the Shelton Research Center, I've done my own study on how that works. So, for example, I'll give y'all two. I'll give y'all one thing I was right about. So, if you ever play sports, who plays sports in here? Raise your hand. I mean, y'all can't raise your hand. Just drop an emoji if you play sports. <laughs> so, I've been telling people for years, bro, like years. I've been telling people for years. Listen. I, you know, your coach always say hands, but say hands on your knees. <laughs> but you know, you put your hands on your knees when you're tired, you bend over and the coach is like, get your hands off your knees. There's no oxygen down there. And you swear, first of all, how, how dumb is that? Because it is oxygen down there. And, but you swear you feel better, right? You're like, man, it ain't no oxygen down here, but I sure am recovering quick. So anyways, I've always thought I was right. Now, I remember telling my coach, like, bro, there's oxygen down here. I'm telling you. I promise you. There's oxygen. I feel good. No, put your hands off your knees. Hands over your head. Expand your lungs. All right. Anyways, I'm making this story too long. Recently, like two years ago, because I've been saying that for years, there has been a study, like not the Sheldon Research, an actual study for real, that said, that showed that you actually recover quicker when you put your hands on your knees. Go look it up. So all these coaches have been lying to us. They've been lying. I get it. You don't want to look weak. I get that part. Like, you don't want to show your opponent that you're tired. But they've been lying. You recover faster like that. It's proven. I even tried it out with my heart rate. Which bring me... God, dang, man, something biting me. Come on, man. I'm trying to bring some, next time bring some bug spray. It's ridiculous. Uh, I know my blood is sweet, but come on. <laughs> you recover quicker from being tired. So if you play sports when you run and work out, and you know you put your hands on your knees to recover, you recover quicker than standing up straight with your hands over your head. I promise you. Don't argue with me. Argue with science. Then, 
So it brings me to my second point um, about what you focus on is what you feel. I've been saying that for years, right? And it's true. Like, <sighs> I wear a heart rate monitor on my watch. Like, I, I love heart rate training. So I'm a big, I'm a guy that loves to train the heart rate zones. Like, I think it's the most beneficial way to train um, to maximize your workout. So I had this theory that when you take your focus off of the work, like being tired or like, you know, whatever, and you do something else, maybe you have a conversation, maybe like some in the bushes runs and you're focused on that. What I've seen, cause I've tested it. You recover a lot quicker when you are focused on something else. I promise you. So the reason I'm telling y'all that, because right now, like I was tired until I started talking to y'all, my back was hurting. Now I'm talking to y'all and I feel fine because I'm not focused on me being tired. I'm not focused on my back hurting. So just a tip of advice. If you're a runner, if you're doing any type of workout and you want to recover quicker, eat some sunflower seeds. <laughs> Have something that takes your mind off of being tired. Or when you run with somebody, start talking about some random. Or watch something on your phone. I promise you, your heart rate will drop quick because you're focused on something else and not being tired. The mind's a powerful thing. But y'all, leg day got me. <laughs> leg day. <laughs> Hold on. I'm about to sit down right quick. Gosh, I got a good blood count. Well, I must have a great blood count because these, these things is tearing me, my butt up today. But yeah, I'm about to go. Thank you guys for helping me get my mind off of not being tired. I know I talked about random stuff, but the point I came on here was like literally um, get to a place where your peace is protected, like get into nature as much as you can. It heals. It's natural medicine for your soul. Um, I promise you, like, of course, be safe. Don't go by yourself. Uh, try to get a companion with you or something like that or go around, you know, a time where everybody's out there. I want you to be out there by yourself, but get out in nature. It, it truly will help your life. Um, there's an app called All Trails that I use. I'm not getting paid for that, but All Trails is like my favorite app. It just shows you trails in the area. Like if you don't have like a name, like this is Texas, right? Like, so like this is our form of nature. Like, I mean, it's like, it's good, but it ain't like somewhere in the Northwest or something like that. But it's a cool trail where it's shaded. You know what I mean? You got squirrels, armadillo. You got, you know, some wildlife. You hear birds chirping. And it just gives you a chance to get outside in the sun and just uh, disconnect and move your body. Because movement influences your mood. You know, some of us, we're depressed because we're staying, we're staying stuck in our depression. We're not moving our body. We're not moving our mind. And we're staying stuck. And one thing I know about life is that even if things don't change around you, if you start doing things that you start, you see progression, progression gives you hope. And the more hope that we have, the less we're going to feel hopeless in our life. Right. So find a goal, like find something to, I only say a goal. I don't, I don't like to use the word goal, but find a journey to go take, like go on a journey. If it's a fitness journey, if it's a whatever, just go on a journey where like you can see some progression in something because where we feel like we're not growing, we start to feel like we're dying. And so that's why it's important to start taking journeys in your life, no matter how old you are. Gosh. All right, I got to go. These things is tearing me up. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Let's get it.